In this problem, we have an Atwoods machine built by connecting three blocks together. Mass 1 has a mass of 10 kilograms, mass 2 is 2 kilograms, mass 3 is 3 kilograms. So to solve this, the first thing to look at is the weight of each of the objects. So mass 1 is going to have a weight of 10 times 9.8 or 98 newtons. Mass 2 is going to have a weight of 2 times 9.8 or 19.6 newtons. Mass 3 will have a weight of 3 times 9.8 or 29.4 newtons. Now when looking at this to figure out what direction these masses are going to go we need to look at the forces acting on both sides to figure out which direction this pulley is going to rotate. So in this problem, we're looking at a massless, frictionless pulley, so we're not worried about looking at rotation. Uh, later in the year, we will include the mass and the radius of the pulley in these types of problems. But looking at this, if we have 98 newtons pulling down this direction and here we have 19.6 plus 29.4 pulling the opposite direction so together those are 49 newtons pulling the opposite direction so again on this side we have 98 newtons 98 newtons is bigger than 49 newtons so this means that this is going to rotate around clockwise. So this side is going to go down, this side is going to go up. So as we go to solve this, we're going to take that into account. Now as we try and solve this, one of the easiest ways of doing this is to treat all of the objects as one single object. And we look at an equivalent system. So with this, we would treat this as m1 plus m2 plus m3, which is 10 plus 2 plus 3, or 15 kilograms, and pulling one direction on this object, we have a force of 98 newtons. Pulling the other way on the object, we have the weight of m2, which is 19.6 newtons, and we have the weight of M3, which is 29.4 newtons. So looking at this, we have 98 newtons pulling one direction. We've got 49 newtons pulling the opposite direction. So the net force would be 98 minus 49, or 49 newtons. Net force is 15 kilograms times the acceleration. And so combining those two equations together, 49 equals 15a, where we get that the acceleration is 3.267 meters per second squared. So on this side, it accelerates downward. On the opposite side, this is going to accelerate upwards. And as I go to do this, I'm going to take the direction of the acceleration as the positive direction. So this way, all of these objects were accelerating in the positive direction. M2 and M3 were accelerating upwards at 3.267 meters per second squared. Mass 1 was accelerating downward at 3.267 meters per second squared. Now, if we wanted to calculate the tensions in the ropes, so if I looked at tension 1, which was the tension in the rope connecting M1 and M2, again, if this is a massless, frictionless pulley, the tension is how hard it pulls on either end of the rope. So tension 1 is pulling up on M1, but it's also pulling up on M2 with the exact same size force. And then in the rope connecting 
mass 2 and mass 3, we have the tension T2 pulling down on M2. That rope pulls down on M2. But it also pulls up on M3. So we're going to try and find those two individual tensions. So to do this, now that we have the acceleration of each of the blocks, we now look at the blocks individually. So to find T1, one of the things that I can do is I can look at M1 by itself. M1 was 10 kilograms. There was a downward force of 98 newtons. There's an unknown upward force, T1. But again, we calculated that the acceleration was 3.267 meters per second squared. Again, with this, I'm making down the positive direction. So for M1, the net force is going to be 98 newtons minus T1. Again, it's 98 newtons plus negative T1, because T1 is up in the negative direction. The net force on M1 is also the mass of M1, 10 kilograms, times the acceleration, 3.267. So that's 32.67 newtons. So then if I combine those two equations, 98 minus T1 equals 32.67, or we get that T1 is 65.333 newtons. So we found the acceleration of the blocks. We found the tension connecting masses 1 and 2. We can also find the tension in the other rope. To do that, we can look at either mass 2 or mass 3. Mass 3 would be the easier one to look at. But for this, let's, let's look at M2, because this might address some difficulty that some people might have. If I look at M2, mass 2 was 2 kilograms. If I go back up and I look at the drawing, I have this upward force of T1. I have these two downward forces, 19.6 newtons and T2. So I need to make sure that I include all three of those forces in my diagram. So I have this upward force of T1, which we just calculated was 65.333 newtons. And then we have 19.6 newtons, that was the weight of just M2, and we have this tension T2. Again, this block accelerated upwards, so I'm, making, I'm going to make up the positive direction for this one. So for mass 2, the net force is going to be 65.333 newtons, that was tension 1, plus negative 19.6 newtons, because the force of gravity is downward, which we were calling the negative direction for this one, plus negative T2. Also, we have that the net force is the mass of just M2, 2 kilograms, times 3.267 meters per second squared. And so if we calculate this, 
we get that the net force is 6.534 newtons. So again, combining those two equations, we have 65.333 minus 19.6 minus T2 equals 6.534 newtons. So 65.333 minus 19.6 is 45.73. And then we bring the 6.534 over to the other side. So we subtract 6.534. And this gives us that T2 is 39.199 newtons. Again, to check to see if this makes sense, we have 65.333 newtons acting upwards. We have 19.6 and 39.199 newtons acting downwards. So that's 58.799 newtons acting downwards. So again, we have 65.33 acting up. We have 58.799 newtons acting downward. And so the upward force is bigger than this downward force. So that would cause an upward acceleration. Again, looking at M3, it would have been very similar to what we did for the first block. Um, it would have been a lot easier to use that one. But this one, there was a lot more to it. You had to get directions of the forces right. You had to make sure that you included both the tension in both of the ropes and the weight. And so it's people will often forget one of the tensions or they'll for, forget to include the weight or they'll include the weight of both of the objects together. There's a lot of ways to go wrong. So I figured looking at M2, would make things a little bit easier.